Today we're going to be installing a, a heavy glass bypass uh, shower enclosure using 3 8 glass. Um, this is a large beautiful home and the customer wanted a shower door to match it so what he chose was a HGTE custom with cast glass. Now usually when we go to measure a shower enclosure most of the time folks want the top of the header to be no higher than this edge right here. Sometimes we can match it but a lot of times that will cause you to have to have a custom unit made which will extend your lead time and usually cost a little bit more money. So a lot of folks will go down and find a standard height that Cardinal actually offers. In this particular instance, the customer is a bit taller, so what we can do is a, a trick where we go ahead and we have the header sit on top of this. Now to do this properly, you need to get an accurate measurement to the very top of this tile here. Then in the front of our book, in the introduction pages, there's actual cross-section pictures of the header. You need to measure the height of the header and add on to it. So this particular header is... Uh, I think two and a sixteenth, and so what we do is we add that to the height of this this tile level here, so that the header is going to sit on top. And an added bonus is we're going to be able to to cover up these holes that are left in here by this uh, shower door curtain, our shower curtain. All right, so Paul, tell us what all the tools you need when you do an install uh, like this one. Well, I mean, obviously you're going to need a couple basic things, um, either a hacksaw or some way to cut your metal. Yeah, uh, chop you saw. Chop saw is absolutely preferable. Okay. Uh, a lot cleaner cuts, more precision. Um, you need a decent caulk gun, preferably a dripless caulk gun. It'll save you maybe having an accident on somebody's carpet, okay. uh, which is always a good thing. Um, obviously, you need a tape measure. You need, I would recommend at least a four-foot level. Okay. Uh, a lot of people use a torpedo level or something smaller. It's, even though the jams are straight, that's really not the best way to get the accuracy you really want. You do, what you don't want to end up is with twisting, because it can cause wobble and other problems, okay. especially on a sliding door. Um, other than that, you know, in this case, we're going to use masonry anchors, so something to tap them in with. You know, preferably a mallet. You know, if you have a regular hammer, you can use the wood handle of it. Uh, obviously, not preferred, but in a pinch. Okay. Um, this is just going to take regular 3 16 masonry bit, nothing special. Mm -hmm. So, Do you recommend having extra 3 16 masonry bits? I know that sometimes, depending on what you're drilling through, uh, by looking at this, we think this might be an easy drill, but I know some of the stuff you might buy at the big box stores, Home Depot and Lowe's, sometimes I've seen bits get real worn out. So having a Well, that's true. Bits, I mean, you can have the spade fall out of them and all kinds of stuff. Right. Uh, honestly, if you're going to save money somewhere, bits isn't the place to do it. Um, okay. You know, Masonry bits aren't the most expensive thing. It's a lot cheaper to spend an extra buck on a masonry bit than it is to have a tile guy come out and replace a tile. Absolutely. Because you got it too hot or, you know. Okay. So, so what's things like that to bear in mind. Uh, well, we're going to go ahead and actually set the jams first. So, um, in this one, we're actually, typically we would set center line, but in this particular case, we're trying to cover up some of the existing. Show me, what, show me when you say center line. Let's explain to the folks what center line means. By center line, now, typically tubs, obviously they're going to they're going to curve in a little bit. Uh, I would usually determine my center line here at the middle, where typically they're the narrowest, mm -hmm. and then to to translate it to the ends, I'm you know I'll center this up. So center line is basically just the center of we're going to center of the tub threshold. But in this case, just to make sure you're not twisted. Once you get it centered here, center off the outside dimension. So I was inch and an eighth, so I'm going to make sure I'm inch and an eighth my outside reveal there, yeah. and an inch and an eighth my outside reveal here, because obviously you can't measure it to it here. Yeah. So just something to bear in mind on that. But like I said, in this particular case, since we have kind of special conditions, we're going to we're going to set this as far out on this ledge as possible to help try and cover up some of these existing holes. Okay. So pretty straightforward in this case. I'm going to make sure I get right on the edge of this curl here. It's important to have your levels. I think that's the biggest thing we see nowadays is that uh, roughly about 50% of the installations that we do, um, the walls are either leaning out or leaning in. So it's real important that uh, we use a level to, to, met, to, le to check not only where your jam's at right there, but also to check the wall conditions, correct? Correct. A lot more crucial, especially on measuring on a slider, you really want to be cautious to make sure that the tubs are fairly level. The rollers have gotten so good that the doors roll so easy that you can actually 
if you've got a severe adage on your curb, your door could actually roll open on you. So you've got it level. You got it level. Jam sitting on the on the tub jam, threshold. Jam sitting all the way down. Mark the holes. Just gonna mark it. Uh, a lot of times, right after I mark it, I'll just make sure that my holes or my marks are really easy to see, so I don't lose them when I'm. You know, if I step out to pick something up, I'm not coming back hunting for them. Let me grab a drill here real quick. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind, obviously, masonry bits got a point on it. They're not particularly sharp. What you usually want to do, though, just to kind of help yourself out, set it right on your mark and kind of lean into it a little bit and use the tip to kind of break the glazing. It'll help prevent the bit from walking on you. Now, now obviously we got our holes drilled. Now you will obviously have some dust and stuff that falls for us. You know, just a damp cloth. You just want to get it off now because afterwards it'll be underneath the jam. Not a huge deal, but you know, it might pick up in your caulk. You might not get a perfect bond. You can just use a damp rag or, of course, alcohol would be the preferred method, but, you know, not the end of the world. And we're just going to go ahead and gently tap these in here. Sit down a little splash. Like I said, one thing you might want to do, if you end up having to use the handle, it's easier if you just hold it up there and just kind of just tap the end of the hammer instead of trying to poke at it. It'll save you some aggravation. The whole idea is being careful around the top. That could ruin your whole profit margin, couldn't it? Uh, yeah, real quickly, actually. Sometimes, too, if, if you want to get them really tight, you can, you know, if you've got an edge or something, it's a little nice to be able to push them down in there. And, uh, we'll be able to shoot those, but I'm, a, I'm one of those people who kind of airs a little bit on the overkill side. So you want any any time I, I drill a hole and create a channel for water, mm -hmm. not that this water could ever even get back there, but it also gives you a leg to stand on if there's ever an issue. You'd be like, look, there's absolutely no way. So sure. So anytime you you put a screw in, you always put a little absolutely a little drop of silicone on there. It goes back to ounce of prevention, pound of cure, kind of. Uh, but we're just gonna pump these a little bit full. Kind of a halo around them, just to make sure. And, uh, I always like to get these kind of started with the fingers before. There's one thing you don't want to do, you want to make sure you get in the anchor and not run over the side of the anchor and get between the anchor and the tile. So start them with your fingers. Well, and at this point, when if you're just finger tightening, you can pull the jam back to where you can make sure that you're actually going into the anchor itself, into the center of it. And you want to also be real careful on these. When you're tightening the screws down, you know, all the weight on this is vertical, so don't overkill it because you'll actually collapse the jam and bowl the metal in. We'll actually, I'll probably end up tightening these by hand just to save. So snug, not over tighten. Right, you just you want to get it tight to the wall, eliminate any rattle. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're going to go ahead and put these screws in, you go ahead and put your center guide in this middle hole. That way you can kind of tighten the top and bottom one and then go ahead and just finish it off. That way you won't have to go back and do it later. Make sure the this has a recessed lip on it. You want to make sure you get it over the jam on both sides. Now I know on the heavy center guides, I mean the heavy bumpers, the screw actually goes through there like you just showed. But on the the quarter inch and three sixteenths, you actually put the screw in the jam first, and then the bumper goes over top of it, and then there's a, a little tiny machine screw that goes in right, to so attach actually it. Will fasten right. It. right. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And we put the thick side on this side so that when the inside panel slides, that's what it bumps into. Right. Got Any it. sliding doors is basically a shingling type system. Your inside panel is always close to your door, or right. close to your shower head. So obviously this one's going to be our outside panel. Perfect. Uh, we went ahead. We're putting up the other jam here. Um, 
on the this would technically be your receiving jam you always want to have on your inside panel here in case this door should start to come kind of out if there was any kind of twist or anything this guide will actually has a kick to kick it right back into the jam here so that it stays perfectly locked in and then, of course you want to go ahead on this one just like on the other side you want to go ahead and put them in when you're going putting so your this, screws so, in. so your small one is always on the shower head side it's always going to be on your inside panel inside panel correct Got both the jams up, right? Both jams are up now. The curve on the cardinal door is an interior set curve, which is nice because it kind of helps you leave your options open a little bit. But, uh, go ahead and get a tight dimension here, about 57 and 7 sixteenths. Um, one thing I will tell you: a lot of times people will tell you to buff your tape to get an accurate dimension. It's also the most surefire way to miscut a piece of metal by. Three inches in this case, so <laughs> yeah. It's always been my experience bending. It's a little easier. 57 and 7 16. So let me just see if this came out of the box that way. Oh, well, per perfect. <laughs> now on these on these curves, these legs that are right here are actually made to have silicone put on the bottom of them. So we recommend running a bead of silicone on these all the way down so that the uh, the curb will stick to the, the tub base. Right, which we're actually going to do and the nice thing is there's a nice little channel cut in there. Now you do want to kind of cut your tip off at an angle and then stand it up on the long side that way your bead will actually stand up further than the metal that way when you smash it down it actually makes contact. You just want to take your time. It's bead, so it'll stay right in the groove. And of course, there might be a little excess there, but that's uh, nothing you can't wipe off. You always want to also kind of make sure if you run a split bead like that, you make sure you kind of push them together so that you have a full seal. Actually, if you hold that up so you can kind of see from the end, see how that bead stands up further than the metal? That way, you make sure you get a good seal. As you kind of saw there too, if you as your bead starts to run together, it's always better to take your mess to the inside where it's not visible. Real cautiously now, one thing you want to make sure you do on this, don't forget you've got that uh, that guide on the bottom here, so you want to set that side in first. Make sure you don't get hung up as you're coming down. Too aggressive pressing down because you'll just you'll lose the silicone out and then if there's any kind of imperfection in the tub when the with the metal rebounds you may get breaks in your bead so it's always better to just kind of make a general contact to make sure that you've got a good seal and kind of leave well enough alone on that. Very good. All right. All right. I'm just next. gonna cut the header on this. We measure for the header. Now on this one, you know, obviously I think you talked about this. Right. This guy was a little taller and of course we had some. The other imperfections we wanted to cover up, so we're going to go wall to wall over the top of the tile. And I want to mention again that that uh, usually calls for a custom unit, and that's going to cost a little bit more and take a little bit longer to to uh, produce. Uh, a lot of people still stay down lower and try to come to a standard height that Cardinal offers, 57 and a half, uh, 62 and a half, different ones like that, but. In this instance, the customer wanted as much height as he could get, was willing to spend a little bit extra money to get that, and so that's what we went, what we did. Right, and I mean, I, he's a little taller than me. Well, you're taller than me. I mean, it, it's six two. I, I can't tell you how many times something like that might be an issue. Sure. You know, when you're even and then so. I know another thing. If if for instance, like at my house, my tile stops. My house is older. My tile stops about right here, and obviously, I didn't want the header right there. So what we also can do at Cardinal is we can rip a filler that will go on up. So if this customer would have wanted the header to stop here, they just need to let us know how far this is, and we can put a filler back there 
so that metal will go all the way back up to the header. So that's a possibility too if you need to go much further. But once well, again, you get into some custom charges and additional charges for the fillers. Right, right, absolutely. And that that is a, that'd be a perfect application, it's especially anytime you see this large bullnose tile. Usually in older houses, that's the tend the issues you tend to run up. This tile actually runs higher than most that are done like sure. this. Sure. So. Right. But uh, measure our header. We're about 15 and a half. And this is going to be fairly tight in here. I'm going to get you to kind of help me. Got it, so we don't hit anything. I want to be cautious on wallpaper. On the header, you kind of pull it and it slides down. Sometimes you have to spread it out a little bit to get it over there. It's a nice fit. And then pull it down so it's all the way sitting. The jam should be touching the bottom track where the rollers are going to go. So it should pull all the way down to where it's set on there. Right, yeah, you definitely want to make a visual check and make sure you're all the way down onto the roller track. But you definitely want to make sure that the, the, see right here where the jam actually meets the roller track right here. You want to make sure you're all the way down onto that. The last thing you want to do is hang the door panel in there and then have the header drop down on you. And, possibly bang a corner of a panel or something and have a real problem. What we're going to do now, we're going to go ahead and pin the header down. Uh, it's just a safety precaution and we're going to go actually through the side of the header and through the side of the jam and lock it so that it cannot move. Now you will kind of, since this is a rounded header, Probably you're going to have to start at a little bit of an angle. Pretty good going. And anytime you're drilling aluminum, of course, you want to be cautious. You don't over penetrate and slam the drill into the metal. As you can see, that just barely it catches its. A safety feature, but that way the other thing you can help you prevent is when you're setting your panels in accidentally lifting the header up and then having that same situation before where the header's not down and you hang the panel in there. All right, so we're ready to hang our glass. Yep. You've got your one inside panel, which has got the uh, yeah we get the, uh, the the inside panel here with the uh, smooth side into the shower, mm -hmm. and on this one we've got a towel bar outside and a knob on this inside panel, so we've right. already got it setting in here that way. Right. And then they both set from the inside before we have the center guide down. So I'm going to have this one in here just to get it out of the way. And then I'm mm -hmm. going to, actually in this case, I'm going to go ahead and pull this in here. I know you had said something earlier. It's important to make sure that you set something down in the tub or even leave the protective channel that we provide on the bottom so that uh, we don't have any tragic accidents. Yeah, in this case we've actually left, and it's kind of hard to see there, but the protective edge has still been left on it. And the good thing is that you can wait until this thing is all the way hung and the weight is on the rollers before, we before take you off. take that off. Right. Now, checking the wheels. I know, you know, we do the best we can uh, at the shop to make sure the wheels are tight, but I think it's always a, a very good idea for uh, the folks to double check and make sure your wheels are set halfway up the slot uh, at the beginning until you get it hung to see if you have to adjust them right. and make sure they're tight. Well, and you always want to make sure, too, you know, that they're evened up and... And you definitely want to make sure they're tight because right. you're dealing with a fair amount of weight here. You know, it's always better to right. err on the side of caution. Now the slots, the slots will, will provide some adjustment. And if I'm, I'm I remember right, it's three-eighths of adjustment. So your walls could be leaning out or in, and you can use these slots to move your wheels up and down right. to adjust the panel. Right, you can move your panel, you know, different ways. This way or that. Right. To kind of compensate for that. Within reason, I mean, sure. some people are... Real particular about what their center reveal is, but right. I mean, uh, you know, as long as the the, end, the finished product looks good and you've got yeah. good penetration, you don't have a leak. Right. And we had talked at the very beginning about measuring that. You know, it's real important that the customer puts a level on the wall to see if the wall's leaning out or in. Right. Any help they could give to the inside folks at Cardinal is going to be better because then they can make the decision whether the wheels will adjust out enough to cover that outage right. or if they need to go ahead and do a rip filler for the whole wall to plumb everything up so right. everything hangs correct. Exactly. Very good. Now in this case too, these doors are, uh, obviously these are a 3 8 cast door. They have that, the uh, 
Cardinal Armor on. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and put rubber gloves on just to kind of give myself a little bit extra grip. Because that stuff's slick. It is slick, there's no doubt. And they're cast, so my suction cup would be useless against them. Absolutely. Too. And I'm just going to lean this weight back to me and bring it bottom over and then drop down. Basically, I'm going to keep my feet up against the edge, so if I have to, I can set it down on my feet just like this until I'm comfortable. And then we'll go ahead. You're going to set those wheels up on that bottom track. I'm gonna before I release the weight, I'm gonna go ahead and move it. Just make sure I've got all the wheels on. Make sure the wheels are moving, huh? Yeah. And then at this point, you can lean that just enough and pull it take that off. piece off. All right. Line it all the way over. Actually, we look pretty good on the wall there. Yeah. Which is nice. And I'm just gonna set this to the front of the tub. And, set, and step around it. Now you had the hole already towards the front, so you didn't have to try to spin it around. Right, which I'm yeah, sure it's a real, a real pain. You want to go ahead and yeah, definitely have it because, like in this particular tub, you might not have enough room to swing around to uh, right. to make that. One thing you always want to do too. A lot of people like put the handles and stuff on here. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do it just as it's a temptation. If you got in a bind, you might grab it, and then you might have another problem. Right. So yeah, there's, so, there's yeah. a reason it's one of the last steps. Absolutely. And uh, one thing you want to watch out for the other set of rollers as you're setting in here. And again, this one you're going to have to swing in a little more. Again, make sure you're rolling before you release the weight. And you had mentioned something about putting pressure on your knob or your towel bar. And I know when you order semi-frameless units from us, we're going to put a towel bar on the outside, but we do not automatically put them on the inside because if somebody was to fall in the shower uh, and they grab hold of that towel bar, it's going to pull that glass down on top of them. Now on our frame doors, since the towel bar is drilled through the metal frame, we do put them on the inside uh, because we feel it'll just strip the, uh, the screw out. But on glass, when you through the glass or even your mount, compressed mounted onto the glass, um, we do not supply it as a standard. Now if you want to order your customer request a towel bar on, on the inside, we will supply that. But uh, generally, we'll make you sign a waiver form saying that Cardinal's not responsible if that customer, um, you know, slips and falls down, and grabs that, and breaks the glass on top of them. All right. Well, now we got our doors hung. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set our center guide just to uh, completely check our function, make sure everything works before we go through the last couple steps, the finishing stuff. You know, putting the handles on, cleaning everything, perimeter silicone. Right. So we want to make sure we're 100 percent before we go too far right and this is just I just centered this there's a there's a hole on this guide here in the inside that's dead center so just a simple side to side dimension and yeah right so on our heavy on our heavy guide we do have a screw that attaches it but on your 3 16 and your uh, quarter inch they snap onto the uh, the channel one thing to notice on this this has got a tapered hole and it's meant to go and you can see the angle on that drill it's meant to go in to the curved part of the curb here so Not into the tub base, correct? Correct. Snug it down with the screw provided. I believe we even provide an extra in case that little one gets away from you in the tub. So at this point, we've uh, we've just about got this thing finished. We put our towel bar and our knob on, and uh, we're ready to go. Oh, and silicone. Silicone. That's about it. All right. He's gonna make one thing you got to keep in mind on these: you got a piece of threaded post here. There's actually a bushing that goes inside there to give you some cushion on the glass. Okay. It's always nice to have two sets of hands on these. And one thing you want to do on this too: just kind of get this started. Because <laughs> it's not going to go on the other side. It's not. Now keep in mind too, this is a bypass door, so you know, if you need to, at this point it is, so you can, that's why I like to put the towel bar on first. And last thing, we're just going to go ahead and put the knob on here. That's a true bypass door, so the knob's going to go to the inside, but I do want to kind of show you something here.
and I'm close. Every one of these comes with a little Allen wrench. Now the Allen wrench comes with the tail bar, correct? Correct. Right. Or or the knob. There's a uh, there's a tiny little guide hole there, so that you can use that. You know, just put the Allen wrench in there to use it for leverage, so that you can actually get that tight. So it you know gives you something to grab a hold of because they're so low profile. Good. All right. So now I guess the only thing we have left is everything's hanging right. Door looks great. Uh, we'll silicone the jams. Now, when you silicone, Paul, you, you recommend silicone on both the inside and the outside? Uh, I typically do. Uh, technically, only an exterior beads are required for water tightness, but my only thing with it, anytime you can keep water out from behind here, you cut down on just the crud that can right. develop. You know. Right. So. And when you say exterior, you mean the interior yeah, of the I shower. Mean, right. Right. So that's really the only thing that's required to keep it. But by putting it on here, I think it also adds support as well. Right. Absolutely. So it's usually a little easier if you just kind of center these up a little bit, just kind of get them out of your way. Just gonna run a real simple bead of clear silicone. You should make sure you get all the way down into every crowd joint, so you want to slow down a little bit when you approach them. Is there any type of special silicone you recommend? Um, there's kind of a mixed school of thought on that. The biggest thing is to make sure you've got a hundred percent silicone. It, it's got the best bond strength. It lasts the longest. It's the most mildew resistant. I know we usually recommend GE twelve hundred. And GE twelve hundred is excellent. Yeah. Kind of the same thing on this too. You uh, you always want to cut your tip off at a bevel, and use the tip of the caulking to to uh, kind of help tool your caulk as you're going. And it kind of helps save you from having to make a mess to try and tool it down to where it looks right. Now on this too. Also want to. Uh, there's two ways you can do this. One, before we had set the curb, you can lay a bead right here to help keep any water that lands on the curb from coming around. I like to run a exterior bead. The only reason being is I can see it, so I know it's. I'm more sure of it. Or you can do both. Obviously, it's just to make sure that you do it. And the nice thing is. We've got your silicone removing wipes, which are excellent for cleaning up. Any, yeah, the cardinal wipes. Any any overages, so. Yeah, they take silicone right off. The glass, the metal, uh, anything. It's wiped silicone. Yeah, they're, wet, they're really wet great. The silicone is particularly nice. Is that wipe that right off there? You gotta love that. Yep. And uh, I'm just gonna move these out of the way here and do the insert. So. And one thing you can kind of see here too, you've got kind of a, something to interrupt your bead. There's a towel bar mounted into the tile. Yeah, on this I just came down as far as I could and smoothed off and then I'm going to do the same thing underneath. And then I'll, I'll smooth the uh, silicone out with, when I tool it. And then kind of the last thing here, obviously we've got silicone underneath the curb so we're good there. The only other place you could even get water in at this point would be around this edge here. And we're just going to run a real lay bead here. Now there is absolutely no way you can get water underneath the metal anywhere on the enclosure. And then kind of one of the things I like to do lastly, just kind of helps keep the curb stable. Even though it's silicone underneath, um, that bead is set back a little bit. So there's always an opportunity, maybe some dust or something can get on there. And, you know, It's just made primarily a personal thing. Um, of course it is a little extra insurance, but it's not necessarily needed. But I always like to do it just as a precaution and just run that bead right on the bottom to the tub deck. And just make sure you got it all the way, got contact all the way. And then kind of this is just the last thing to do. I've already done interior exterior jams, exterior on the, on the uh, curb and then I'm just going to run an interior bead 
Again, not absolutely necessary, but it's nice if you know if you got any imperfections in the tub, kind of helps prevent any wobble once it's cured, and just kind of generally makes for a tighter installation. And one last thing is, it's always nice to have a little extra insurance on your uh, roller guide. Every little bit helps. And uh, that's it. Just wipe down the glass, and it's done. Well, Paul, you did a great job, man. It, the door looks phenomenal, and uh, I think the customer is going to be very happy. I think so. Thank you. Gosh, it's about, I am so happy.